What's up, guys? Hours before Raw, and I do have the 11 20 23 preview coming at you in just a couple, two, three minutes. But first and foremost, a huge change is finally happening on Monday Night Raw, or at least that's the report, the word going around the campfire. WWE, and these are two things that we have asked for, pleaded for, for the longest time. On this channel, two things, right? On the production side of it all. Before we even talk about the creative side of Raw, two things that need care and attention, time put into it. One, Pyro. For the longest time, we did not have Pyro to start Monday Night Raw, which tells the audience that there's no pulse behind the show. There's no reason to care. The audience didn't even know they were alive most of the time. No joke. (laughs) That's not for a laugh. Like we would start the show, we'd zoom into the crowd and they didn't know they were alive. There was nothing to tell them they were alive. The theme music was atrocious. There was no pyro. They're looking at each other. You could see somebody in the audience. I just got a text from Kenny. He says we're live. And then all of a sudden they make a little bit of noise. They're looking for cameras. There's nothing. And then all of a sudden uh, uh, Adnan Verk or, or Jim Smith or Kevin Patrick, whoever the commentator is. They're just like, welcome everybody to Raw. We have a good show tonight. <laughs> Buckle up. Should be a fun ride. Yeah, into a brick wall. Nothing at all. Finally, we get Pyro back on a small scale, but it's something. On this channel, we kept saying that Pyro needs to be louder. It needs to be a little bit more sufficient. It needs to be a little bit more viable. It needs to have substance behind it. And to Levesque McMahon's credit, we got the substance. It got a little bit longer, a little bit louder. It's not the explosive Pyro we got during the Attitude Era, But it's definitely a couple two tree notches above what we've been getting. So the pyro is starting to come around. That's the good news. But I've been saying nearly every single week like a broken record. We need new theme music. This song at the beginning of Raw makes you want to sleep for a very long time. At least a couple two tree days or a couple two tree weeks. It makes you just want to take a long Z. Forget the NyQuil, leave it on the CVS shelving. This show, from the jump, the theme music. Born for greatness, greatness, gonna get greatness. I was born for the greatness, I am greatness. I don't even know the, I don't even care. Just repeating the same word, every other word. It was so bad. It does not get you, it, it doesn't get you energized. There's no adrenaline behind it. And again, it's sad that we have to compare so much to the Attitude Era. But if you want to know why it works so good in the Attitude Era, and by it, I mean everything, it was the little things that aren't so minor. The theme music. You guys remember the Raw is War theme? I didn't even know the lyrics. They were just screaming something, and you were just fucking on the roof when the thing started, right? You started in your couch. By the time the 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 theme music was done, you're on your roof. You're trying to get down so you can watch the rest of the show. If you were sleeping before Raw and that theme music hit, you were awake for the next three months. And if you were there live, anybody will tell you, if you were sitting near the stage especially, you were not hearing a damn thing for the next three weeks. Literally, anybody will tell you that. And and back then, we didn't complain. I can't hear for weeks. I haven't been able to hear. Can we sue WWE? No. It was like a badge of honor, right? You went to school. You didn't hear a damn thing for three weeks. Oh, you went to Raw, huh? Yeah, huh? What about strawberries? I like it with whipped cream. No, Raw. Yeah, yeah, my grandmother. She passed, yeah. What? You didn't know. Teachers even knew. They're like, all right, just sit down. Sit in the corner, please. Okay, basically. Yep, sit in the corner. Thank you. The answer is 75. It's English class, basically. It's not math. Just sit there. You didn't know. You didn't hear a thing. You can hear a thing, right? Because you went to Raw. That's the pyro. The theme music was was palpitating throughout the arena. 
I mean, after the theme music, when they hit to the crowd, everybody had a sign. Everybody was raucous. Everybody was just tweaking out. Everybody was flipping out. From the jump, dude, nobody even came through the curtain yet, guys. The intro to Raw, you were jazzed up. The remote was down. Sorry, Monday Night Football. You're done. My last button channel was WCW Nitro. NFL Football, Monday Night, it didn't even get a spot on my last button channel. Last channel button. None. It didn't do it because then you had to go to WCW if there was a a commercial or vice versa. But that was that, man. Before a wrestler even came out and then the theme music hit for the wrestlers, right? The glass shatters and here comes Stone Cold or here comes the Cerebral Assassin, Triple H, or here comes The Undertaker, or here comes The Rock. Oh, man. When that music hit and then you hit another octane. No. For years, we've had sour music. Absolutely nauseating, pathetically bad intro music. In the last couple of years, a couple of years we've had this song. Born for Greatness, or whatever it says. Greatness, I think is maybe the time. I don't even know. I, there's nothing great about the song. We have It's overstayed its welcome. It doesn't get you excited or energized for the night. To which the broadcasters, the commentary team, is not excited for the night. To which... The crowd in attendance is not excited from the jump. And it's a vicious cycle. And it goes round and round every single Monday night for years. Not just weeks, not just months, years. Well, have I rambled on that rant long enough? Because the word is we are getting new theme music. It is finally coming. And that is one of those things that is not so minor. Everybody's going to swipe that underneath the rug. Oh, yeah. Good job, Paul. But that's one of the things where I'll say to Levesque McMahon, thank you. Big time. I just hope the theme song is worthy enough to be on a Monday Night Raw for a three-hour program that greatly needs energy behind it. I hope this song is 6,547% better than greatness. I was born for greatness. No. This song needs to be great. And I hope it is. I have the title of it. This is Word. This is from, I believe the source is Fightful. Fightful Select. They're saying that they have a name for the song. It is Born to Be. Now, upon uh, research on it, I don't have a sample of this song. So I can't tell you if this is going to be any good or not. We're going to have to wait and see. And again, I don't know if that's tonight, guys, or probably after Survivor Series, or if they just want to wait till 2024. This sounds like it's something that's in the works. Might not be tonight for Raw, but it'll be upcoming. Most likely after Survivor Series, which would be just one week away. Born to be. Man, I hope there's energy behind this. I really hope that the theme music gets me just awake. So I got my coffee after a long day. I got the remote in my left hand. That song comes out on. Down goes the remote. Left hand can pick up another coffee and I'm set. All from a theme music guy. Just the intro. The intro music alone. The opening signature. Which, by the way, that's another part of this story. Apparently, there's going to be more music to some of the cutscenes. Some of those, uh, like, match graphics if you will, and those names to those songs is Survival, Came to Win It, and Eyes of a Warrior. So again, I'm not familiar with any of these songs. I don't know if they've already been in play and various outlets, or are they all brand new? I don't know. I don't have samples for either. But the match graphics, interludes, and cutscenes will be survival, came to win, and eyes of a warrior. The intro, the new intro, is supposed to be born to be. Long overdue, guys. This sets the tone for the night. I cannot explain to that. I cannot, I cannot say vividly enough how much the opening to Raw, the opening signature, the opening theme music and intro, all of that, the pyro. All of that presentation sets the entire three hours in motion, whether it was one hour when Raw first started, became two hours, or if it's three hours, if it ever goes to four hours. Oh my goodness, could you imagine that? However many hours it is, this is not a minor detail. This is something that has been years in the making. This song was 
was absolutely atrocious from the beginning and the fact that it lasted this long that just shows you how much lack of care was in this organization so i'm glad to see that part of monday night raw changing hopefully that's the start of some of the bigger things to come hopefully right that's what we're all hope i told you what i want to do more than anything is put hhh up on a pedestal and not rip everything he does but to do such we have to do things that are actually changing raw for the betterment it doesn't take weeks months or years to undo what vkm did no it takes literally one day one hour one minute to start those changes these changes should have been done months ago on the very first day these are the changes that you set in motion you get your team and you go we are absolutely flipping raw upside down it doesn't take long at all there's no undoing anybody's work you now start creating your vision from minute one these are the type of moves that are needed for raw to become something relevant again for all of us man i was so happy to to read that report see that report do more research on it and uh it, it looks like it's a very real thing with now more substance and more word coming out about it so this looks to be pretty valid and it looks to be imminent looks to me much sooner rather than later these changes to raw on the production side of things very cool now let's get into the more I I imminent part of raw the more sooner rather than later part of raw which is tonight all right i have the preview for you guys now of course there'll be much more than this i don't know how much more you guys tell me if this sounds like a a pretty stacked car that you care about or not I'm just telling you what WWE is giving us, presenting us. Now, their their headline for tonight is a one-on-one -on -one encounter, as of now anyway. One person from Team Cody, Team Rhodes, for Survivor Series, the baby phases, in War Games, versus one member of Judgment Day, the heels, in War Games, Survivor Series. One versus one. The winner will decide the War Games match advantage. Now, this is something they do all the time, at least past several years. I don't like it. They do the same thing with matches like Royal Rumble, where they'll have a match and it'll like decide who's number 30. I don't want to know who's number 30, though. That should be a big surprise, right? Like, just to give that away, to try to pop an extra 60,000 in the rating or so, it doesn't seem like a, a, a good... It seems like it's a wash. I don't see the positive outweighing the negative. Something like that should be saved for the actual event, another lair, or at least a surprise in this whole match and saga on Saturday night. Save that. That's what I would do. And on top of that, you know the heel works best with the advantage, right? Because then the faces have to deal with struggle and adversity, which is what you got to do in 2023, I'm told. Well, there you go. The heels already have to have the advantage. So that tells you, does Drew McIntyre get involved and cost Team Cody yet again the second week in a row? Last week, it was for tag titles. This week, you don't get the advantage at War Games. That's kind of what it's telling us. It's setting it up for a, uh, for a Drew McIntyre interference. Heels, Judgment Day will get the W and will get the advantage. I'm okay with it as long as it's done correctly. Now, on that same note, and I'll go back to that too, because we want to talk Cody Rhodes. That's a big storyline for tonight, possibly. But along the lines of Drew McIntyre, the aforementioned Drew McIntyre, he's supposed to kick off Monday Night Raw tonight. He's going to address his actions from last week. Of course, turning heel, shaking hands, mutual respect era for Paul Levesque McMahon, shaking hands with Rhea Ripley, the real leader of Judgment Day, let's be honest, the mommy and leader. And they shook hands, and that solidifies Drew McIntyre, not a full-fledged member of Judgment Day, but aligned with the Judgment Day for War Games. So he's going to address his actions, there'll be some type, and, and that's going to kick off Raw. So you know the faces are going to come down, have a little bit of a rift, and Drew, by the end of the night, most likely will be taking out the faces so that the heels get the advantage. A little bit of spoiler booking for you, but it looks to be sitting in their lap. Now, if I can go back to Cody real quick, there could be a big, a big reunion tonight. There could be a big surprise, a big return. Spoiler, put on the earmuffs if you don't want this spoiler. It's a possibility. 
Randy Orton could show up tonight. And that's because he could be the fifth member. Should Drew align with the Judgment Day officially, then Team Cody would need that fifth person. It's only one of two people. I've already told you on the channel several times. CM Punk is out. WWE and All Elite Wrestling not doing any business with Punk as of now. So that leaves two individuals. One, Randy Orton. And again, as I told you guys in several uploads this past week, they want, if it's going to be Orton, they're going to want to, in the word going around internally, is they're going to want to put him out there to the crowd before Survivor Series. Introduce him as the fifth man before Survivor Series. That way, the crowd in Chicago doesn't absolutely revolt and in disgust start chanting maybe CM Punk or what have you. Just reject Randy Orton, right? Simmer down the crowd, make sure the, the, the pot of water is not boiling over, right? We told you, we advertised Randy Orton. So you get the surprise tonight, and you still, a lot of people are still going to want to see him in war games, his first real match back, and you don't have to get your hopes up, it's not punk, we told you it's Orton. So we already know that WWE wants to, and this was, this was word all the way from last week, that they want to announce Randy Orton beforehand. Now, that's if Orton is still going to remain that fifth member, right? With this company, it's, it ain't just VKM, I'm telling you. It's Levesque McMahon as well. They call audibles. The, the whole Roman keeping the championship at Mania, we were told that was pretty last minute that they decided, no, we're going to keep it on Roman. They already knew he was going on vacation or going home for two months. They knew that Cody needed that title because that was the whole Brock Lesnar story. That's the whole reason he would attack Cody. And he still decided to call the audible. But all that aside, if it's Orton, if it is Orton on, su on Saturday night, expect him to show up tonight. They could. They could have audibled and are going to put LA Knight into this thing, thinking that either way they're going to revolt against Orton. They don't care about LA Knight anyway. They showed you that by thrusting him into a title match with two weeks notice to get fed to Roman. They've already told you that a million times. They told you it took eight months when he was getting big reactions in January after the Bray Wyatt match. And that was with a Mountain Dew match and he was getting all that praise. And they just kept him on the shelf. They kept him off the shows. They tried to make you forget about him. And he, he just kept getting more popular. But they don't really care about LA Knight. They just see him as an old dude. 41 is like 91 with this company. They think he's going to break down any day now. They don't want to put the stock in him. Management think he, thinks he's difficult to work with. I've already covered this. Internally, management, including Levesque McMahon, they just, they're upset that he doesn't learn or doesn't want to learn the WWE way. And he doesn't go about business the WWE way. He's kind of stubborn and he kind of beats to his own drum. This company cannot stand that. So they could have just said, you know what, Chicago, it's going to be hostile. They're going to reject anyway. Let's put LA Knight as the fifth man. And you could have already seen the seeds planted this past Friday. Out of nowhere, Cody Rhodes just shows up on the blue brand, interferes with bloodline business with LA Knight. What's the reasoning? Could LA Knight show up tonight, interfere with Judgment Day business with Cody Rhodes? Right? One hand washes the other. You helped me with the bloodline on my brand, even though it's not your brand. I'll help you, even though it's not my brand, with your business, with the click that you're against, Judgment Day. You could see them just flip. You could see LA Knight show up tonight and be declared the fifth person for War Games. So it's one of those two names, guys. CM Punk is out. I, I can pretty much confirm that. Again, it's like a Clorox wipe, 99.99% .99 sure, everything that I'm hearing. It's down to two names. It was only one name up until a few days ago. It was just Randy Orton. And the plan was to unveil him beforehand, which we would have thought was tonight. Still could be. But with what we saw on Friday, it's like they're setting themselves up for a couple of things, right? They got a plan B, not just for Survivor Series, but what that does on Friday as well with Cody and LA Knight, it also plants the seeds for a possible WrestleMania triple threat title match. Roman Reigns versus Cody Rhodes versus LA Knight. BC, why would they do that? Well, if they want Roman to go for Hogan's 1474 record, and you don't want Cody to take a second straight WrestleMania loss, you have LA Knight eat another L. 
Look up at the lights. Cody is saved. Roman walks out with the belt, with the championship, and LA Knight is there to take the L. That's why you would do that if you're this company. So LA Knight is the perfect middleman in all this. They don't see him as a top guy. They're not going to book him as a top guy, but he is going to be there to do all the dirty work. You can already see where this is, this is headed. So that's a lot of info, man, to look out for tonight. But I do see Randy Orton or LA Knight in some way. One of those two I see uh, appearing tonight or at least word on them being a part, the fifth man. Uh, the only other option, the only other thing, because again, it's not punk. It's Orton or LA Knight. Or they could go the most simplest, boring route. And as much as we all love Kevin Owens, they could just have Kevin Owens come out of nowhere. The dude's suspended because he punched out uh, Grayson Waller and Austin Theory, right? So he's suspended by Nick Aldis. Could Kevin Owens just rejoin Sami Zayn and do this whole Judgment Day thing yet again? It could be, man. There's a possibility that they could just say, screw it all. <laughs> Let's go the easy way. Let's just throw Kevin Owens in this. I guess they could do that. That's the least fun way to go about business, I feel. So again, just to reiterate, Drew McIntyre will start the night off. We expect the night to end, or at least one of the most pivotal parts, if not the main event of tonight, will be one-on-one, -on -one, Team Cody, one person versus one person of Judgment Day. And whoever wins that will have the advantage at War Games. That's the two big segments planned for tonight. As far as matches, you're going to get Chad Gable versus Shinsuke Nakamura. Of course, Nakamura has already beaten in the last two weeks uh, Tazawa and Otis. So now all he has to do is take out Gable, and then he can still be booked to whatever they have him being booked toward. We don't know. I don't even know if this company knows what to do with Shinsuke. So right now, he's just running through Alpha Academy. There's two big ladies matches. One of them literally big, not, not actually. Like, I don't know how many people are truly going to care about this match. But it's, it, it's two... It's big woman colliding, right? It's Raquel Rodriguez. That's no small gal. Uh, she's a brute. And she's taking on Nia Jax tonight. Now, what are we doing exactly? Like, like, who are you trying to book strong by booking this match? Nia Jax just got back a few months ago. She came back beating, going through the whole women's locker room in just two weeks. Remember that? And, and she already just feels like another spoke on the wheel. So what are we doing with Nia? Why did we bring her back? What is your... What's your game plan with Nia? If that doesn't show itself tonight, the game plan for Nia Jax, then this company seriously has a Nia Jax issue because it's just going to weigh down the, the whole roster. And on top of that, what are you doing with Raquel? If you want to pump her status up, then she obviously has to beat Nia Jax. So then you're solidifying that Nia's a glorified and I'm you I'm being generous a glorified jobber and I'm not I'm trying to find where the glorified part even is that's why I'm being generous because I mean it's a stone's throw away from just being a straight up jobber and if Raquel doesn't win well you're just digging her hole even more because she's already had title matches in WWE and most of the crowd never even cared Raquel versus Nia. Strange booking. I'm not sure who is supposed to go over here. And I'm not talking wins or losses. I'm talking who is supposed to be booked to be dominant. These weird matches where Levesque McMahon just throws a bunch of powerhouse females together and thinks that's going to sell itself. You saw the Fatal 4-Way at one of the last pay-per-views. Was it the last one? What was the last pay-per-view? We did it live. Was that Crown Jewel? We had four individuals in there, four ladies, all powerhouse brutes, right? Zoe Stark, Raquel Rodriguez, Rhea Ripley, Nia Jax. And it didn't deliver. Odd. And the other ladies match, this one is big. This is Becky Lynch versus Zia Lee. Zia Lee's been on a tear. Becky Lynch has just been announced for war games. So both have to look dominant tonight, right? But... Becky Lynch can't just go in there and have this hard-fought match with Zaya, and Zaya barely squeaks out a victory. So here's what BC's thinking. You gotta know that damage control is going to interfere, right? Or at least that should be the general consensus here. Because Becky Lynch, 
got her nose into damage control business on Friday, right? Joining forces with Team Felair. That's Charlie Flair and Bianca Belair along with Shotzi. So Becky didn't have to show up to the blue brand. Stay on the red brand. You got your own business with Zia Lee. There's no reason to get your nose into damage control's business. But she did. So it's only fitting that damage control now shows up to the red brand and cost Becky Lynch the match somehow. But again, I feel that if Becky is just giving Zaya this hard-fought contest and at the very end, damage control saves Zaya, that's not going to do anything for Zaya. zaya has been taking out individuals fairly quickly with one kick to the dome piece. But I understand Becky can't just be another casualty in Zaya's war. So what I'm thinking is you make this fun, old-school Monday Night Raw. Have Becky absolutely demolished in the parking lot, in the street, coming into the arena, right? Becky is on her way in, damage control with a vicious, badass, over the course of two segments maybe, a whooping in the parking lot, and Becky declares, promises, declares that she will be in this match still. She is not giving up. She will be in that ring with Zaya. She might hobble down with one leg and maybe a half working arm. One and a half arms out of commission. But Becky Lynch is going to get in that ring one way or the other. And Xia Li, in just a couple of minutes, ends up taking out Becky Lynch. Absolutely defeats Becky Lynch. Xia, obviously, a big, massive W for her. And again, there's an asterisk, because Damage Control took out Becky earlier in the night. But this is massive for Xia. And for Becky, she loses nothing. She got demolished by a whole group of some of the best wrestlers in the world. Io Shirai, Io Sky, Asuka, Kari... And Bailey, and of course Dakota can throw some stomps in as well, even though she's still injured. Five ladies just whooped your ass in the parking lot, and then you still got in there with one of the most badass females in all of pro wrestling today, Zia Lee. Now Becky loses nothing, and she declares now it's really war, and I'll be there Saturday night. That's how I book this. A simplistic match where, or simplistic booking where you just have them wrestle for five to ten minutes. And Zaya's, Zaya's getting taken all the way to the, the, to the finish like it could go either way and then damage control hits the ring. That's not doing anything for Zaya. That's the problem. That's doing something for Becky. That's doing nothing for Zaya. Zaya just kind of becomes another female at that point who almost was going to lose if not for damage control. You got to be very careful how you book this, guys. And that's what we do on this channel, right? I mean, that's why we we critique these shows so vividly because every decision affects these characters, these superstars, these people going forward, which in turn obviously affects the segments, the matches, the show as a whole, which obviously then affects the company, which affects all of us. It's all it's all part of the wheel. Not the Endeavor flywheel. Nobody's getting fired. (laughs) Until April, and then WWE is probably going to fire about 50 talents bare minimum. I'm telling you it's coming. That's another upload for another day. I don't know what got us onto that. Anyway, for tonight's Raw, that's the preview that I got for you. A lot to look out for. I don't know how much is going to be... um, I don't know how much of that is going to be as suspenseful as it can be. I I just hope it's not a boring show. This is the go-home show to Survivor Series War Games. Let's put a pulse on this show. I'm hearing good things on the production side soon to come. Let's leak that into the creative. Guys, I'll be with you tomorrow. We'll do the review of Monday Night Raw. We'll see how this show all unfolded. Was it good, bad, or ugly? We'll decipher it all. So until next time, which will be within the next 24 hours, the review of Raw. Top guys, we're out. Current situation. Check you. Peace.